I remember you had also mentioned, yeah, like when <clears throat> creating the fog for Switch specifically, you also had these 3D planes that created these extra color splashes to cover up uh, some details as well. And that also helped with performance. Maybe you can tell us a bit more yeah, about that. Yeah, those, we call them fog planes. Mm. They're an essential part in the look of the game, I'd say, but also in the performance. I can show you this is a very obvious fog plane. Uh, like super bright. Uh, but the reason why it's there is actually because of performance. Uh, because a new area is being loaded like here. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was too expensive. It was if it's if it was to be loaded like here. So we added this fog plane to hide loading. Uh, and that was a really easy, fast, efficient solution for us to push the performance in some aspects because the, the time frame was tight and we had to like figure out something. And this solution worked really well in these like the corridors with these mm. obvious gates, you know. Yeah, uh, really nice to be beacon, leading <laughs> beacon. Speaking of two birds, birds in on stone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, and designers. The, yeah, because this worked uh, really well as visuals as well, I think. Uh, and also, yeah, I'm hiding stuff as well. I can show you one case here. These are fog planes that are activated on HGRP. So these are supposed to be hidden right now. Uh, and then we have these separate fog planes for these, which they're really brighter because we, <laughs> we had to work with some extreme values sometimes. So what is the difference between those two fault planes, the HDRP ones and the URP ones? It's just the color, actually, uh, because we had to make sure that they blended well with the background fog. I see. Uh, okay. Because we want to sell the illusion that it, they are part of the fog, when actually they are just a... I'll show you, they're just planes. Uh, I see. So it just resulted in a different aesthetic, moving from one to the other, so you just had to adjust the... Uh... Yeah, you can see here that it doesn't blend so well with the buildings and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like you can see them pop in a not, not so nice way. Uh, but these fog planes also work, played a big part in, yeah, as I said, the visuals, because uh, you get this almost painted layer on top and you can really have uh, some unique splashes of color in some places and lead the player uh, in a way. And this specific level does not have so much of that, sadly. Uh, but you can see this <laughs> this one is quite obvious uh, and it's uh, leading the player quite clearly i think uh, Some yeah. to... and... sorry oh, sorry now yeah, continue yeah. sorry just an, another interesting thing about just gonna go back a bit to the sewing fog uh, is that we achieved to fake the we actually fake the volumetric fog a bit, even though it's a screen-based fog. Uh, our graphical programmer, Daniel Quick, which is amazing, he made a solution for actually creating like volumetric fog volumes kind of, even mm. though it's uh, screen-based. So you can see this, see this fog here. Uh, that was something created specifically for Faking the volumetric density volumes. So we have these. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh. So yeah, you can see these are actually like volumetric fog <laughs> volumes, which is quite. I think I, I, I think it's quite uh, cool uh, yeah. to create yeah. this uh, in a screen-based fog because it's not something I've seen before. So I think Daniel made a really good job creating this and also adding this moving uh, layer on top, like this layer mask, uh, mm. making it look. So it's a screen-based shader essentially. So it'll show up no matter where you are. Uh, yeah, it's a screen-based fog. I don't know more than that. I'm not so no, no worries. Uh, informed about the about for the screen. for the fog planes. I was wondering what those actually are. So it's like it's a mesh plane with a shader applied to it and a color. Or is that yeah, something... exactly. Okay. Uh, 
So it's a shader with a depth node on it. Okay. So it takes the depth mm. of the level and applies it to the shader. And then we have this fade towards the edges. Mm. Uh, and then we can change the... Uh, this is a separate material, I think. So the only problem with this is that we had to make lots of materials because we didn't have to ma make a like specific component for this that could change it just locally. So we made lots okay. of materials. Uh, that's one downside with it, but it was really uh, easy to work with other right. than that. So we can change these values and how, how soft the fade should be. And the closer you get to it, the more it fades away. Is that what's happening? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you never see that it's plain. 